I saw a tweet that was like, people think there's going to be a big old sci-fi world ending asteroid thing, but it's just going to be a slow decline of, of hot weather and, and famine and, and water. I think we'll take ourselves out before the climate does. <laughs> I, I think the currency will just fucking tank and then we'll literally just be like, hey, that's happening. Nothing fucking me. matters. And then we'll just <laughs> beat the shit out of each other. That's, uh, that's happened multiple times throughout history and on Rick and Morty. And then the rich people will just like be like, yo, we're just going to go underground <laughs> for a couple. Or we're just going to go to space. And that's what they're doing. Damn. That's cray cray. Yeah, I was wondering if people were thinking of best slash worst case scenarios for Earth. And they're just like, yeah, you know, can't really save it. Everybody says that we've already kind of passed the point of no return for a semi comfortable as it is now experience on the planet. So you kind of just got to go up there. I was, man, I was watching, I shout out this conference again, Salt Conference. It's about investors, but they had Mishu Kaku, you know that guy? The physicist Asian dude? No. You know Mishu Kaku? Everybody knows Mishu Kaku. Oh, Mishu. Really? Or no? I don't know. Dude, everybody knows Mishu Kaku. Let me just, let me just get this little. Get oh, this. this guy. Mishu, man. Yes, you know, this Mishu. guy. He's cool. Um. He's kind of old now, isn't he? 47. What does that Damn. mean? Old people are fascinating, old. you know, because they're so old. They, they're they a little bit older. It's crazy. It's like you look at old pictures of them like in the 70s and they're like older than I am now. I'm just like, damn, you've been around a while. <laughs> yeah. He was talking on the SALT conference about just the future of, of humans in like 150 50 years and, and whatnot. And he was talking about, and shout out Ian Dunlap of, of Ian Dunlap fame, but he was talking about this before I heard Mishu Kaku say it, which was interesting as a weird confirmation is that people are trying, I don't know if they're trying now, but they're talking about using technology to upload consciousness as an avatar to different planets to kind of be avatars on different planets to do things. So your body just be here on Earth just dead while you're on Mars chilling. Maybe. Yeah. I'm down with that. But what if someone just like rapes your body without you knowing? It, it could this is a, a wicked thought, but it just popped in my head. You could have oh man. You could have a, a planet full of you know Ricky, Rick and Morty, dude. And yeah, how well, use... don't throw this on them. This is your idea. What are you saying? <laughs> and you know, and you know how they used Mortys to power a planet of energy. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> you you might end up having avatars <laughs> on a different planet and using human bodies that are are quite like electric, you know, to uh to power the planet. Yeah, that's some wicked slavery. Yeah, fucking thing. But. It might be at a at a point where you know people are kind of programmed now. To, if if you have a good product, you don't really care if your privacy is being monetized, or if it's like destroying the earth. Or like four year olds made it for pennies a day. But it, it, you know if uh, if you have a good product and you got a good situation as a weird avatar robot on a Jupiter planet or exoplanet, then people might not care about their bodies being raped for energy this iphone 13 is a good product well so is that raped product. for energy damn dude so like what if your what if your body just like dies like is your consciousness still alive i guess you don't yeah, really there was there was a amazon show that was um and it wasn't really talked about but you know how i love i love media as a precursor for technology in the future because these cats are just putting everything in media just as like a as a warmer upper for what people should experience star wars and plagues and zombie movies it's like oh there's so many zombie movies so many plague movies so many climate change movies i wonder what that's about it's because it's what you're gonna for sure happen to um but there is a uh an amazon tv show that's not tv it's an amazon show and it was about a guy who was in 
I think I think it was he died and he goes his consciousness goes digital to stay alive or something. I should probably watch that as a little as a uh as a Nostradamus Amazon is telling you what they're trying to do because they like telling people what they're doing via media. I don't know. Let's see, what, let's see what it's called. The future. Oh, I also saw, I think I sent it to you. Maybe I didn't, but this guy, <laughs> this, first of all, I had a, just a horrendous, it's just a poor week of a lot of phone usage. It was disgusting how much phone I was using. And I looked at that screen time. And I also, I also, it was this week I, I didn't work out because I like tweaked my shoulder. And, <laughs> and uh, I think that might be a part. Is it, dude, ah, working out is great. My screen time is obnoxious. I don't even want to look at it because I know it's so bad. You should. You should. Is it? Is it like, do you consciously know it's bad? Yeah, because I'm like, I don't know. What I just app? be on what my app? phone a lot. The dumb apps? No, no, no. They're like, it's productive stuff. But still, I'm just like, dude, like, this sucks. What are you getting done on your phone? What, phone? what are you producing on your phone? I'm fucking literally just like, I'm growing to just, or I'm trying to. I kind of just started. I'm just trying to grow some Instagram accounts. But it's like rep reposting other people's memes. And they're competing with each other. I'm just trying to see which one will do better. They're both kind of different. One, one, one. But I would just be on my phone. I'm just be like, dude, like I, like I know I'm on my phone trying to work on something, but I feel the addiction to Instagram. You know, like I feel it. Let me tell like you. when I open the app, I'm just like, ooh, a little dopamine. You know? Yeah. I I don't like it. This week, man. This week I spent 20 hours on TikTok. Damn. It's a bad week. Damn, let me see. Well, I'm my phone's recording, but maybe I can see on my Mac. Audible only an hour. My goodness. My goodness. Screen time for Mac is off. Turn on. No, I don't want to share across little devices. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Audible. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't check, but I'm sure it's I'm sure it's not great. Last week. Should I share across devices? Nah. What screen time? Yeah, because then that'll like fuck up my stats. It's a good day to have. Man, I was also thinking about because I'm pretty sure I haven't read hell articles because I've I got to get better in my reading habits. Obviously, this week Apple's eventually going to get into healthcare, and I was thinking it's pretty absurd how people can't just completely biohack their emotional state and their like health well being because pretty easy brain chemistry stats could be funneled to your phone and see how much dopamine you're getting with certain activities or how much whatever the opposite of dopamine is for certain activities, whatever's making you depressed and track that to certain activities. And then you just biohack yourself into a uh, chemically happy life. Then we just get some ads about antidepressants. Well, that too. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's why, maybe that's why there's a whole industry about not being depressed, huh? Yeah, well, some someone who's not depressed is making billions off of <laughs> people. <laughs> His other people's depression literally gives them a, a dopamine rush. Literally gives them generational wealth. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, get that oh, person man. on the pod. See, hey, how does that make you feel? How do you start? I was like, well, I had a really depressed roommate, and I just, I don't know. I had a homie in chemistry, and he was like, yeah, this this drug right here, it blocks all the bad things in your brain. I kind of bought like, another drug from another country, slapped my name on it, and sold it. And now, you know, you know, you can't think too hard about what you do. You, you'll make yourself sad, and you know, <laughs> I don't want to make myself sad. That's one more sad person. Yeah, oh man, trying so hard not to sneeze. Go ahead and sneeze, bro. It's a, a free sneeze state. I can't, I'm scared. That's okay. It should be okay. What that one channel I was talking about with with uh, movie shorts? I think it's shorts from all over the world that they just put on a channel. Mm -hmm. it's an interesting model, but it's called uh, omelet or omelet or something. That that's also a nice time waster, but really cool. Uh, five to like fifteen minute movies that are from I think award winning places and fun stuff.
YouTube be crazy. Omelette. A O M E L E T, I believe. I was also watching a video from 13 years ago. It was a Puerto Rican videotaping of some music band. And, and this thing was like PowerPoint fonts saying, You're watching this channel thanks to YouTube. And I thought that was hilarious. 13 years ago, this is what? Damn. 2000. Oh, 2008. Huh? Um, YouTube is still around. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. It's not that uh, crazy. It's, it's very ad admirable to be around, but I mean, lots kind of... of websites, platforms have come and gone in YouTube span. A lot of video platform plans? Vine. I know there was another one in between Vine. Remember Daily Booth? Do you remember? Fuck, there's remember Form Spring. Well, that's not video. Big um, it was always like a companion to YouTube, I feel <laughs> like, you know. And Instagram was always kind of there. Um, Twitter was always kind of there, but there were like other like people would also be like, Oh, follow me on this other thing. What was YouTube's edge in Google's mind? YouTube's edge in Google's mind. I actually listened to a podcast about this. Yeah. Um. So Google. Oh, fuck. There's some really good details too, because it was kind of a fucked up situation. But I kind of forgot. But I'll try to remember. So at the time, the YouTube CEO, who I I think might still be the same CEO, it's a lady. So she was developing Google Video, and it was competing with uh, it was competing with YouTube, and I think she like paid a bunch of money. She like spent billions like developing Google Video, but nobody was using it. And then she was like looking at YouTube and she was like, and they were like really video. struggling because they were starting, they were uh, like, they were crashing all the time. They didn't have a huge team. And she was like, fuck dude, the investors are going to fucking kill me if I like burned $10 billion on Google video. And now I'm thinking about buying YouTube because people were still using YouTube over Google video for some reason. And then she was like, fuck it, I'll just buy it. And so she bought it. And then they introduced the uh, the partner program and started like paying people and Susan do their search in there. Susan Wachiki, Wachiki Polish. Mm -hmm. I'll get down on that. She she's goes hard, dude. She was around during the incorporation of Google. She was formerly marketing at Intel, and then she helped on AdSense and went to VP of Advertising Commerce, oversaw AdWords, AdSense, DoubleClick, and Google Analytics, and says YouTube was a small startup competing successfully with Google's video servers, which I did not know existed. I remember it. Her response was to propose the purchase of YouTube. All right, guys, I have a great idea. Uh, we're Google. We got money, yeah? You guys want to buy this good company? Yeah, and I started as a dating site. YouTube? Yeah. Um, but then they quickly pivoted when they realized, hey, yo, we just kind of invented internet video. Why don't just focus on this? <laughs> um, well, they didn't invent it, but they made it, like, really easy. Um, remember back in the time, like, you literally had to have, like, a quick time player or some bullshit to watch a video online? It was quite <laughs> the hassle. And YouTube was, like, the first native video player. It was pretty astounding for its time. Even I, as a, how old was I? A 10, 11, 10, 11 year old was like, huh, interesting. I gotta get Susan on the pod, dude. Uh, oh yeah, she's scheduled in for, for November. Thank you, thank you. Um, somebody posted on Instagram, yeah. like, hey, uh, did you know YouTube was started because some guys were trying to find a video of janet jackson's tip popping out during the super bowl i, I do kind of remember that lore a little bit is that a is that a true memory or something i'm just making up it might be true but um and i was like this is just another corporation that was built off trying to expose black women or something i'm just like dude <laughs> well that may be true 
YouTube has made more black women billionaires than probably anything else in history. So not billionaires, millionaires. So like, why don't we just focus on that? <laughs>